Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the mean structure and fluctuations of the closure east of Taiwan from in situ and remote observations. So why do we need to do such observations of corrosion? And it's because the corrosion transports the heat, salt, and lava fish from east of Philippines to the southeast of Japan, and greatly influencing regional oceanography, climate, and fisheries. So areas that will benefit with a full understanding of, of corrosion. Okay, to start with, I would like to talk about the observations of corrosion. Basically, there have no comprehensive and completely observation of corrosion for the last few decades. So little is known about its structure and hydrography to researchers. And I will introduce the three topics that we will going to introduce this in this paper. So the first is the mean state and variability of crucial. And the second is the dynamic causes of crucial variability. And third is to uh, investigate the water methods associated with crucial. However, it's too much content to cover in this paper. So I will, own, I will mainly discuss the first and second points in the, today. So in the first part, I want to introduce the zonal transects of Croatia. So there is only PCM1 transects that located off Elan in 1996, and which was downed by World Ocean Circulation Experiment. And there is no complete observation since then. So this is why the National Council, uh, National Science and Technology Council proposed the observations of corrosion transports and their variability program in 2012 to study corrosion more closely. And the diagram on the right shows PCM1 transects and the three transects of OKTV program. Now I'd like to talk about the OKTV program. The OKTV program can be divided into two parts the moored in instruments and ship surveys. So the moored instruments are as follows. With three moored ADCVs that are located in orange, or orange squares and six pies in the green triangles shown in this figure. And the black spots in the KDP2 and 3 are CTD sampling locations. So here is the ADCPs and pies. ADCP is the instrument that use Doppler effect to measure the current speed in different depths. And the pies measures vertical acoustic travel time run trip from the sea floor to the sea surface. And researchers can use it to roughly look estimate the location of thermocline. And back to what was said at the beginning, what we want to know is the mean state and variability of corrosion and what causes its variability. So now we have the data on ADCP's observations of velocity and the data on CDD observations of temperature and salinity. So now we can discussing the first and second point. So now I will then introduce the data. First, this, this plot is a uh, data measured by the ADCP and CDD. The, and the velocity is divided into two components, U and V, and then they are both positive to the east and north. So moreover, there are both uh, there are velocity, salinity, and temperature have mean and standard deviation figure with depth on the y-axis and longitude on the x-axis, and the uh, data on which transects is located 
the bottom right corner. So now uh, here is the velocity mean value figure. We can see that your component is clearly slower with a maximum of 0 0.6 meter per second, but V component has a maximum of 1.2 meter per second. And not to mention, we can see that there are two velocity maxima in a KTV and KTV two and three, which referred to in this paper is dual core velocity structure. And I will explain two mechanisms of it later. So it is the temperature and salinity mean value figure. In a temperature figure, we can see the isotherms tilted upward to the unsure flank of crucial and it's a typical as a, hy a hydrographic transect of just traffic current and in a salinity diagram the salinity maximum indicating the crucial waters are located between 100 meter to 200 meter depth and we can also see the mean salinity was very low in the upper 50 meters. And this is one evidence that of the intrusion of South China Sea water. It's because the South China Sea water's salinity is lower than crucial waters. So this is the standard deviation diagram of velocity. We can see that in KDB 2 and 3, there are obvious variables in UMV components. And the standard deviation of V component was roughly 0 0.4 meter per second, and which is about 33% of the mean maximum velocity in the mainstream of crucial. And it means that the crucial's velocity is always changing. And it is the standard deviation figure of temperature and salinity. The highest sigma temperature observed along the KT3 transects between 300 and 500 depth. And in the same place, we can also see that there have low salinity standard deviation. So the variability in salinity is larger than 0 0.4, was mostly in the upper 50 meter depth. And it was caused by the intrusion of South China Sea water, as we mentioned before. So in the last part of data, I mentioned about the dual core velocities in the mean velocity slides. So, and I will explain the first mechanism now. Here I put all standard deviation figure in uh, KDV3 transects together. We can see that most of large standard deviation value located at 122 to 123 degrees is longitude. It's because the uh, eddies influence the structure of ocean. So when eddies contact corrosion currents, both of their velocity, salinity, and temperature will change. So in this figure, high standard deviation is represented at this. And it will cause another velocity maximum at the east flank of crucial. So this diagram shows the sea surface height and drawn from uh, satellite data from which we can see that there are few mesoscale eddies in the crucial basin. So this diagram is also evidence that supports the first mechanism. So in addition to the westward propagation of mesoscale eddies, the dual core veloc of velocity structure have another mechanism, and which is the intrusion of South China Sea waters. As we mentioned before, the salinity of South China Sea water is lower than crucial waters. So in these two figures, upper side, we can see that the 
low salinity and high standard deviation. And it's the evidence of the intrusion of South China Sea waters. So when they contact each other, the salinity difference will cause a strong just traffic current. And that will uh, be the another velocity maximum at the west flank of the crucial. So now we can have some conclusion. First, we can see that the crucial is always changing. Second, the high variability in velocity salinity temperature at 122 to 123 it, uh, degrees is longitude. And last, there are two mechanisms may allow crucial have two velocity maxima. And the first is the westward propagation of mesoscale eddies. And the second is the intrusion of South, the South China Sea waters. Thanks. He explained why need to know crucial and add more keyword beside the figure and and also mark the point at the figure. So I think it's easy to understand. And I think it's better that you made a slide for the importance of crucial in the beginning not just speak through the content and the way you explain the charts is better for the audience to understand and talk one.